Today, here's our central question. Why do you choose to believe in a higher power? We hear a lot of people talk about their religion, their spirituality, believing in something bigger than themselves. But what do they truly get out of it? What is the purpose? It's a question I, I struggle with a lot to convey the answer effectively. And today, I try to sit down and answer that exact question. But of course, I couldn't do it by myself. So Michael Bottega and Seamus O'Brien are back. And we try to discuss why we choose to believe in a higher power. This was a very difficult conversation and not one that has a definitive answer. I want to set the expectation right away. You're not going to finish listening to this podcast and now you will have a step-by-step -step guide as to why you should believe in a higher power or why you should continue to believe in a higher power. This topic is very individualized and for today we're sharing our three perspectives and as you'll see, they are not the same. Thank you for tuning in to the R20s podcast. Without further ado, Michael Bottega and Seamus O'Brien. Last time when we were all together, we talked a lot about our why, why we do the things that we do in our passion projects, why we do all these things that we're doing in this post-college world, in our day jobs, everything that we're doing with our relationships. We got really deep on that topic. One additional part of that why that I want to go really deep into today is why do we choose to believe in a higher power? One question that I ask myself, and I get asked a lot by people uh, in my inner circle, people who I don't know, they ask me why I believe in God. And what do I get out of believing in God? Because there are people who don't believe in God and they get the same things out of life that I do by believing in God. They are equally as satisfied. They are equally as happy. They don't need this sense of a higher power in their life. And I want to set the tone right away. This is not a pro-Christianity, like you need to convert to Christianity tomorrow. Not at all. This is more just to discuss what the three of us get out of believing in a higher power. And if you believe in the universe, if you believe in the sense of spirituality, uh, spirituality, <laughs> if you believe in any form of religion, this is more to discuss what is the benefit of believing in something bigger than yourself? Because I think it's very powerful, even in, in our our day-to-day -day routine. In our case, what's the benefit of believing that at the end of this life, we're going to go to a place to be with something that is much larger than ourselves? And that is what we're centering our whole life around, this one idea that we are serving this higher being the entire time that we're here. It's a very hard question to ask, so it's going to be a bit layered. I'm not just gonna straight up ask you why you choose to believe in a higher power. Me and Seamus had a whole in-depth talk about religion the first time he appeared on the podcast. So Michael, I'm gonna ask you this part first. What do you think got you into religion in the first place? Was it more just familial, your family was religious, so you were religious by uh, the transitive property, or do you think it's something that you had to come to um, more like I did where my family was religious, but I really didn't embrace religion fully until later on in life where I had to make a decision for myself that I wanted to stick with the faith. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I mean, it's kind of an interesting, um, I think way that I got into it. Um, probably similar for other people. Um, but, um, it started off probably very similar for a lot of you, uh, family, you know, my family went to church, uh, and we went to church as kids. Um, it was never anything that was forced upon me. Um, I kind of just got into the routine of going with my family. I think maybe one time in my life, I can kind of recall, I don't even know if this is true, but maybe there was one time in my life where when I was young, I don't know, I probably was tired of Sunday morning or something and I didn't want to go. And I think I, I kind of remember my parents being like, no, like, you know, you, you got to come to mass with us. But other than that, it was never really anything like there was a fight about me not wanting to go and me resisting. Um, so that whatever carried on throughout, you know, most of my life up until middle school, high school. Um, and uh, once I got to high school, there was a period where I kind of um, was just going through the motions um, probably freshman year to around junior year, there was a period in my life where I just felt that I just kind of would go to mass just to go to mass. And I was not paying attention to anything. I was, you know, maybe I'd read along or whatever, but I wasn't listening to homilies. And I kind of just felt like I was there just to be there on a Sunday. It was a Sunday morning thing. And I was mostly thinking about getting breakfast sandwiches afterwards with my family, probably. Um, and not to say that that doesn't still happen sometimes now. I mean, there are days where you're just really tired and you go to mass on Sunday and you're kind of just there, but it's different. So in high school, um, I basically started to um, 
find a group of friends that were involved in kind of like the campus ministry program in my school. Um, and it was kind of a weird way that I even got to that too. Uh, I just so happened to be at a friend's party. I think it was junior year. And I walked outside towards the front porch this one particular time in the evening. And there were these two guys out there that I kind of knew. I wasn't like super good friends with them. And they were just both talking and one of them uh, was talking about hanging out like, you know, whatever the next day or the next weekend or something. And they kind of just looked at me and they were like, oh, you know, Michael, you know, you, you want to hang out too. And I was like, yeah, sure. And, you know, it, it was kind of just like, I don't know, those are kind of weird things when those happen to you. Like you don't really know someone that well. And they just invite your, you to their house to hang out with their friend group that you don't know. It's obviously pretty nerve wracking, especially when you're 16, 17 years old. But anyways, I ended up doing it. And thank God that I did. So I hung out with this group of friends. And, um, you know, from the start, they were pretty chill. It's not like I went to some like Bible study group with them. They were just a regular group of friends, but they so happened to be involved in this campus ministry program in high school. So one thing led to another is that I started to get involved in the program as well. Um, you know, it started off by kind of just being like a general community of people, um, you know, during our like break periods in high school. Um, it was a 30 minute little set or 40 minute session and people would kind of just hang out in this one room. And there was a presence of religion in the room. Obviously, there was crosses on the wall and there were some, you know, Bible quotes around. But it's not like there was anything really, you know, you'd walk in and everyone was sitting in a circle praying. It was just a fun environment with a lot of good people that I seemed to connect with. Um, they ended up started to do they started doing these retreats and I kind of got involved in these retreats. Um, the first one I went on was this one called Caritas, and it was just kind of like a a fun, not too serious one, but I really loved it. It was great. I, you know, I started becoming really, really great friends with these people. Um, and then it transitioned in, into this one called Kairos, which Seamus, I know, you know, and Tom, we all know a lot of people in the Jesuit community, Catholic schools, they're familiar with, uh, with, uh, Kairos, um, without getting too much detail of that, uh, that kind of took off. I mean, junior year, senior year, I went on the retreat multiple times. Then I went to college and I went on it there as well. And it was great. But so I'd say that that definitely formed a foundation of my religious beliefs in my own personal life. Because at that point, I had, you know, my religious beliefs in my family, I'd go to church or my family. But then when I was my own person, sort of in high school, I still was carrying on that faith. And I still would do those things. And no one was telling me to do it. My family, my parents weren't telling me to go on these retreats, weren't telling me to stop in the chapel of my high school in the mornings. I just felt that it was something that I enjoyed. I felt that it grounded me. It centered me. It, it kind of uh, would shape me into, a, I guess, a relatively good person. Uh, I guess that was kind of my overall thought with it. And I just found comfort and joy in believing in a higher power. Um, once I went to college, I wanted to go to a Catholic college as well. So I'm happy that I did. We all obviously went to Fairfield University and Jesuit school. And um, the same thing happened there. But I did notice that there was a shift. When I went on Kairos in college, I was a little hesitant because I had now at this point gone on like six or seven retreats or something because I went on a ton in high school. And I... I was a little bit like getting out of that. I felt personally, this is just my own, you know, experience with it, that I didn't necessarily feel like I wanted to always share my thoughts about religion with a lot of people and be very vocal about it. So, cause a lot of the times in these retreats, which is, I know one reason why some people are turned off from them is because they're pretty personal. You have to share some pretty personal things and your beliefs and your thoughts and how you view life. And, you know, if you're in a group of five and all four people are like, I love God, I love Jesus. I say the rosary every night. And then there's the one person who's sitting there and they're like, I don't really do any of this. You probably feel pretty inferior to them. So it's not that I never felt that, but I just didn't really feel like I wanted to or had to share these things. So when I went on that last retreat in college, I kind of was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take like a different approach to religion. And I took an approach that was very kind of to myself. So throughout the rest of college, I would continue, I continued to go to church. Um, 
uh, on Sundays, but I, you know, I'd go with my roommates. Fortunately, you know, I'm very thankful that I found some great roommates who would go to mass with me, but not all the time. There were certain days that they didn't. And, you know, I still felt the drive to go by myself. And I always felt great afterwards. Like I always just, especially in school, you know, you're going through stuff, you're stressed about things, whatever. It was just a excellent environment to kind of like start the week. You start in this solemn, peaceful setting to yourself early in a Sunday morning. If you had a rough night the night before, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of like coming out of it and you're like, all right, let me relax. Let me think back on my week and kind of plan for the future week. So that was how my approach started to go in college. Um, now after college, I think the same thing applies. Uh, you know, I'm living by myself now sometimes and same thing. I go, I go to church just on the Sundays by myself. I don't really, I mean, not really. I don't tell anyone that I go. I just go early in the morning, come back. Most people don't even know about it unless they ask. Um, a lot of my friends from home don't necessarily do that as much. And it's not like I'm judging them or nor, nor do I care. It's the way people are. I do it for me because I think that, like I said, it grounds me and it kind of gives me hope and joy. And whenever things are tough in life, you know, like we talked about in the last session of this podcast, kind of that why, why, why are things happening? Why is this happening? And there are a lot of the times never answers to really any of these things. And since there are no answers and since there's no way to get an answer, me personally, the only way that I can get any sense of an answer is talking to God and kind of being present with my faith and having that faith, that trust that everything, you know, will come together, things will work out. And, and, you know, I mean, one thing for me is I like a lot of people is safety. I'm probably a little bit too concerned about it. Sometimes I get a little freaked out with, you know, just health issues and, you know, my family and, uh, you know, when my family's traveling, I get nervous about that sometimes. And there is literally nothing we can do. We are very, very powerless people sometimes. Like, you know, your family is going to go drive on a road trip. You, I mean, it's, it's, it's up to chances. They could be safe. They could not be safe. The only thing that kind of grounds me is being able to sit, talk. I say a prayer and that's about that's about all you can do. Um, there's, I mean, Tom and I took a, a quick, brief uh, Bible session class when we were in college uh, for a semester, and um, it wasn't really. I mean, you could touch on this too. It wasn't really anything like. It wasn't like trying to convert us and make us these like really like strong believing Catholics. It was kind of just more of topics about life but applied in kind of a faith aspect. And that's all I kind of look at religion to me is that it's just things that happen in life that we often, that I think everyone is confused about, doesn't really know, you know what's going on. They're unsure, they're scared, they're nervous, they're anxious. Reading a lot of these Bible passages, listening to a lot of homilies, they're all just life stories. And if there's a religious tie to it, You know, some people are into that. Some people aren't. I personally am. And that's the way that I look at it. So believing in that higher power, believing in God to keep me safe, believing in, you know, you know, Mary, you say a prayer. It it definitely grounds me. Um, A few months ago or no, a few weeks ago, um, I was kind of going through something uh, where there was just a bit of a scare for me uh, for a health thing. I was a little unsure about where things were going. and it was tough. Like it, I've never really experienced that before. Like, you know, usually you experience health related things with a family member or a friend. So you see it on the outside when it's yourself and you're nervous about something with yourself, it's really hard to not think about it. And you get, at least me personally, I got extremely anxious constantly. I mean, it was legitimately every waking moment I was thinking about this. I would wake up think about it until the second I fell asleep at night. And in fact, I even had dreams about it sometimes. So it was safe to say consuming my life. And, you know, I would try to distract myself. I would put on, you know, Seinfeld or some show to try to, you know, things that I 
tend to love photography, art, you know, video games, whatever. I would try to do all these things to try to distract myself. And I found myself never getting distracted from that main focus of what was on my mind. And it was hard. And I think the, literally, I, I like, I don't want to sound like I'm preaching and, and for people listening, they might say like, yeah, right. I don't believe that. And you know, if you don't believe it, that's, that's fine. I, I'm not criticizing you for that, but genuinely taking a step back, laying on my couch, laying on my bed and saying some prayers, you know, it's a form of meditation to a certain level. And I think a lot of people could probably do that as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, related to God, Jesus or anything like that. But, you know, like I said, I I do relate it to that and it helped so much. I mean, I, I said to myself multiple times, you know, I was waiting on some test result for some things. And I said to myself multiple times, no matter what these results will be, I'm not saying that I won't be mad or upset at maybe God. I probably would be a little uh, frustrated, confused. I mean, you see people who go through tragic events, you know, they lose their children in, you know, shootings or something like that. I don't personally, I, I can't sit here and be and say confidently that I would be able to say, it's okay, God has a plan. I mean, I know people have gotten to that point and they forgive and they, you know, forgive someone who did something tragic like that to their family members. I like to hope that I would be able to do that, but I can't confidently say that I am. When I was thinking about, you know, what the results might be, I said, okay, one thing's for sure. I don't know how my thoughts are going to be if God forbid they are something bad, but one thing's for sure is that I will promise to myself, I'll promise to my faith, I promise to God that I will not use this as a way to turn away from my faith that I will continue to stay strong with it and continue to believe. And it's going to be hard. And I probably will question why even more than I already do. And I probably will be a little mad, but I don't want to turn away from it. And thank God everything was okay. But I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a tough topic. I mean, you know, th- this is where my brain's now kind of coming to the end of, I don't really even know. It's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to talk about. And I think that's why I've kind of wanted to kept, keep it so private in my life sometimes is because I'm still trying to figure out why. Um, at the end of the day, it's something that grounds me and keeps me going and keeps me hopeful in life. It's so much to unpack that I find myself saying to myself in the same type of light i was having a a conversation on one of my previous episodes uh, with my friend alana and we had talked about the same idea where young people are trying to find their way in any form of religion and it's become increasingly siloed off where we don't feel comfortable talking about our faith in public as people did in the past it's not as open as it used to be exactly like you talked about whatever reason that might be people don't want to share that deepest side of them or people are scared to share their beliefs uh, because maybe it's not as mainstream as it used to be but it's difficult to explain why you have faith in something that has never given you a real reason to have faith in it in the modern times there's i can't give you an scientific indication that God exists or he doesn't exist. Nobody can. That's why there's a constant debate over the topic as to how did we get here? How was this all created? Nobody has a real answer. And you're trying to describe a why for something that the world's smartest theologian thinkers, the world's smartest philosophers have studied their whole life trying to come up with an answer with. And at the end of the day, they can say a bunch of fancy words in in a very beautiful sequence, but it's just a really fancy way of saying, I don't know. It, it's impossible at this point to give an answer to the question. And where I think we get stuck is we're trying to talk about something that's beyond ourselves. And we have an idea, but it's individualized. There's no specific answer to why in this case. I can give you a scientific answer as to why it's important to drink water. 
I think it's pretty obvious for anyone who's a human being. It helps you function as a human being. You need it to live. But everybody's reason for having faith in a higher power, whether that higher power is the universe or whether you call it God, it's individualized. And trying to convey that idea to somebody who doesn't live in your own head is very difficult to do. I think the theme that I want to convey today is that you have to come up with a reason that works for you. And our three reasons are going to be different from each other. There's going to be aspects that overlap and there's going to be aspects that don't. It's going to be very Venn diagram type of shape. And when I ask Seamus the same question now as to what you think about what Michael just said as to there's so many reasons to believe and there's also so many reasons not to believe. How do you go about staying true to yourself where you have a faith that is rooted in something that you have developed for yourself how do you come back to it in times of struggle and how do you keep it in your life and keep it at a center point and it fuels you to be who you are yeah i think i'll candidly just start off by saying that first off michael you shared a lot of really great things and thank you for sharing them because some of them are very fascinating and i could personally relate to um, and I think Tom made a great point just in terms of like, yeah, we're all wired differently and that naturally I'm just going to make different perspectives on this conversation, even from one Christian or to another one from one Christian to someone who follows, uh, Islam or Judaism or whatever it may be. Um, but additionally to that, like, I'll be the first one to say that my faith probably isn't as strong as it was a few years ago. I still care about it deeply, but I can also... I know how I have felt when I have been very in touch with my faith and I know how I feel now. And those feelings are different. And I think that comes naturally also just with, you know, development and maturing. And I'm not saying maturing out of faith. I just mean more in terms of like you develop as an individual and you change and have different feelings about different things. Um, but I think something that has always stood out to me, especially since I've better understood my faith and where it comes from and the experiences Michael mentioned earlier something how they would hang out just in this room, like in between periods. And that was very relatable to my experiences. Like in high school, like our campus, our mission ministry was, yeah, there was like a little lounge area and it was one of the few areas in the school that had a PlayStation and Xbox. So when you go to an all guys school, a lot of people are going to show up there. Um, and I think we, what I came to realize through my experiences of faith, and I kind of talk about this through my the papal visit and the friends I made through that was the recognition for myself that faith to me in a lot of ways is about the norm, about the simple things that you experience and that it was a way for me to better describe and to put an example to emotions and feelings that I couldn't fully understand with regular words. Um, and so having those connections and making it recognize that those small, simple things of just kind of hanging out and having those conversations or just those moments of emotion with those individuals that may not even be as in, in touch with their faith, but you're just recognizing there's something powerful coming out of that is where I've noticed it. And to me, it's become more as much, I think, the big thing that a lot of people can take from faith if it's something that they're called to is it's philosophy at the end of the day. Like it's a, it's a, it's a structure into how to, if you care about certain morals or emphasis on, you know, different aspects of being a human in humanity um, on how to live. And so I think even though maybe for me personally, my faith has adjusted over the years, I think, I can still gather a lot of different things from the philosophy of what it's really about. Finding God in all things, showing gratitude and love and care for your neighbor, being forgiving, something I'm always trying to work on. Um, and so I think to the conversation of just faith in general and, you know, why is that important to someone like myself and, you know, the, the highs and lows of it, I think you can really just pull away the aspects of religion was something you know, whether you believe in God or not, like that's, that's fine. But religion in the sense of how we understand it was created by humans. Like Jesus in our, from our perspective came down and 
you know, was with us. And that is amazing. But we wrote, we had to, you know, put that into our own words as I guess what I'm trying to say. And so there's always going to be things that are beyond understanding or knowledge, whether you believe in faith or not, but it's a way for me personally, um, to help understand things that are just not easy to understand and to be okay with a question that's outstanding and trying to live with that question and how to move forward from it. I know we're very young, but it's still, it's still a question that crosses my mind quite often. Yeah. Uh, what happens when this all ends? Yeah. What happened? What happens when we're dead? Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a natural thought. I think it, almost everyone has sat down at one time or another and thought about that and thought about what happened to a loved one when they're passed on. Uh, what is awaiting us on the quote unquote other side that we like to call. And it was something that I sat down and I thought about. And that was for me, what faith was rooted in where I couldn't rationalize to myself that there was nothing on the other side. I didn't get that sense of purpose. I didn't get that sense of comfort by telling myself that I have nothing to worry about when it comes to the other side. This is all random. This is all just a spontaneous scientific event that took place and created all this. And there's no meaning behind anything. That is the real meaning that we should just embrace the moment that we're all in. And we should just absorb all the energy around us and just take it while we have it because it's going to be gone. And then that'll be it. None of our actions have any real consequences. Anytime I always hear somebody say like, Oh, just think about how you can zoom out and we're just on a rock in the middle of space. Like uh, nothing that we do really matters. I, I didn't find solace in it. And again, you can call that finding a source of strength and purpose and a higher power. If you believe in the universe and you believe in the energy of the universe and you find comfort in that, that's a source of finding strength and a higher power. And that's a beautiful thing. But like I said, it's individualized. For me, I didn't choose to put my faith in just the universe as a whole. To me, I had to rationalize that this couldn't, in my eyes, just have created randomly. I have this feeling deep down that I truly believe in that someone or something had to have created all of this. And I choose to place my faith in my Christian God where I believe that there was a creator behind all this. And I find that sense of purpose and I find that sense of strength when I get up in the morning that I have something to live for because there is something on the other side and there is a purpose behind why all of this is here. And even in the Christian faith, there's so many forms of denomination. Not everyone in the Christian faith believes the same thing. You have Catholics, you have Protestants, you have Presbyterians, you have Episcopalians, you have Lutherans, Baptists. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are people who are under the same umbrella who don't even believe in the same thing. It's difficult to rationalize someone else's thoughts but that for me is what gives me that sense of purpose believing that there is someone there is something beyond this that makes me want to get up in the morning and continue to do those things and i think in the religious sense especially amongst young people seamus you alluded to it and i i think it's a really interesting topic to talk about is we're trying to talk about something that's beyond this but it's through the eyes of humans where humans are trying to convey this message that we can't possibly understand because we can't understand what God is doing. How do you try to even explain that to someone who doesn't have a semblance of faith yet that you're going to hear this message through writing that was written down by humans. You're going to hear this message by people who are speaking it, who are humans who don't understand the intentions of God, but you're trying to, we're trying to tell them why we believe in it in the first place. Does that make sense as a question? Yeah, I think to the most part, I, I think I, I understand where you're going with it. I think what really comes to my mind when I think about that question, um, and when we're just talking about the deeper, what's the deeper meaning of what they're talking about here, is that usually the deeper meaning to me is actually the most surface level aspect of it. Um, and that might sound weird, but like, bear with me for a second. So when we go to church or, you know, you go to service or whatever it may be, um, you know, a lot of those readings that you're speaking on have themes that are very, very obviously human because they're trying to be relatable to the people that, um, who are listening to this, 
but they're, they're day-to-day things that we experience loss pain forgiveness gratitude sorrow joy mercy whatever it may be these are things that we deal with in our day-to-day life and i think what really clicked in michael was talking about retreats the, the moment that faith really clicked for me was recognizing the emotion that goes along with it and that to me and again i i talked about this i think on my last on the last time we were chatting about this but like i see god in people i see god in nature and it like it sounds so at, at first glance it sounds hippie but it's it, the reality is if you believe in a creator that it all comes from there and so me showing someone showing laughter to me is like okay that's that's god working through them sh- being in a happy joyful place and so i think as i go about my day to day and i try to you know, if someone's open to having a conversation about this and talking about it, where I draw a lot of that from is just from seeing the emotion and the the simplistic moments in a deep, deep level, I guess you could say. Like there's a lot of, most of the deep moments that are happening in readings, like I was just at a big wedding, for example, and you know, you're reading Corinthians and you're reading all these passages and they come back to love. And like, seeing even though the people you know i was there with i wouldn't say like my family's irish catholic like we're religious but i don't think it's like you know everyone's there every sunday all this stuff you know it's not like a super strict you know mindset to the way others may perceive it but there was a lot of i felt god a lot of that weekend because of the love and joy and the support there were for these two individuals you know, making vows with one another. And to me, that was incredibly special. And, you know, that's one point, obviously we were, we were in a church for that experience, but there's no reason you can't have that in your day-to-day life. And I think that's for me, sometimes I try my best to understand when thinking about other people's perspectives that may not be as into faith is if we're having these conversations, thinking about those small moments that to me seem like faith, but to others might just be, you know, simply put a moment. Um, and that's kind of just the way I perceive it. Michael, I want to come back to the community aspect of all of this. My experience when I've been around someone who's really in tune with the universe, who's really in tune with the higher power is they just seem more engaged where they're curious about the world around them. They're willing to take that extra step to investigate something that they've never investigated before they're willing to take that extra step to experience something that they've never experienced before because they're more grateful for the moment but i want to know if you agree with me in that perspective in that perspective where it, it feels different when you're around someone who's so in tune with the environment around them that they're so grateful for everything that's been given to them whether they choose to call it god or whether they choose to call it the universe it doesn't matter in my opinion it, it's just a different type of feeling yeah i mean i i definitely have experienced that myself as well um i um one specific thought comes to mind this is a few years ago i remember i was talking to someone about um just faith in general i don't even know how we got onto the conversation but somehow we did and i distinctly remember them saying like essentially it was you know I, I, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that anymore. I don't, I don't go to church anymore. I don't really believe in God anymore because I haven't really, it doesn't seem like God has done much for me lately. Like life's just been pretty bad. And I, you know, I kind of am like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. I, I, I looked at that and I, I don't really look at faith as something that I'm trying to get something out of it. You know, I'm not trying to say like, Oh, I, you know, because I believe in faith, I'm going to, you know, be super successful and fine, have a wonderful life and no problems at all. I know that's not the case. Life's going to throw you, you know, curveballs all the time. Like we've been talking about them this whole show. Um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought for a sec. To add on to what you're saying then, Michael, I think there's a lot to be learned from those people though, too. Like, I think to me, perspective is, everything like, yeah i have a different perspective than the both of you and whenever we talk i learn more about the way you guys see the world and it fascinates me and i think even for individuals to what you're speaking to michael that may not be you know as interested in that it might be a different perspective and something that you know can be a question initially but also at the same time i'm curious like yeah. i'm 
curious kind of like how that journey has led you to where you are today and how that can help myself develop further. I'm not sure if that kind of helps maybe think a little more about what you were, what you were thinking there, but that, that to me is something that always stands out. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I I've always just found maybe this is why I'm just a little bit sometimes more private when it comes to religion, because it's, it's a constant struggle. I think we all struggle with it in terms of, you know, yeah, I mean, you could easily just sit down sometimes and literally just look at life and be like, wow, everything really just is a matter of just chance and coincidence and things could happen. A tree could fall in my house right now and just completely kill me. And like, that's the end of it. But, you know, I think just, I, I, I don't know. I, I have, I have these, these, um, I think people just question more about life and when they question more about life and they appreciate more things in life that they send it, they tend to have more of that joy about the little things. Like you were saying, you know, i you know, we find God in all things, right? That's just us. And those things are right now friendship, having, having friends like you guys, you know, you know, before I spent the weekend with my, with my family and it was a wonderful time, nothing revolutionary happened, nothing crazy happened. It was just a, basic situation, but you could easily find God in those settings right there. Um, I think sometimes people overlook those little things in life and maybe that's why they may not really get that same sense that we do and that, uh, in, in, you know, gratitude, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I, I, and I don't, I don't even really look at religion so much as I know you were saying more so about the afterlife, I don't know. I don't really, I think about it, but I think sometimes when I do think about it, I just get so lost in the mindset of, I have absolutely no idea what that is like. I don't know what is to come afterwards. So I guess all I can do now is just focus on what I'm doing here. And I think that if I I personally believe that if I am, you know, a faithful person, I, you know, I pay attention to the homilies. I listen to these stories. I listen to these messages that Seamus, you were saying that are about greed and whatever the case may be, that it will shape me to be, um, you know, a good person on earth and kind of like, what, what is your purpose in life? What is your goal in life? Why were you put on this planet? And I, and I believe that by following these values in life, that that's how you can kind of succeed in those areas. I don't know. I'm, 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 it's a tough, it's a tough conversation, honestly. And, uh, I think it's something that I struggle with myself often. The struggle is completely natural. And I expected this to be a tough conversation. Yeah where I didn't expect to walk out of this, where I could put the definitive answer in the description for this episode so nobody has to watch because nobody has a definitive answer to this question. It is so hard. And I could have this whole conversation today about why I'm so happy in my faith. And then you, and exactly what you just said could happen. A tree could fall on, on the house tomorrow uh, and completely wreck the house. And now we have thousands of dollars in repairs. I could say to myself, where was God in that? I, I don't see him in that. Uh, and now my faith, it starts to waver a little bit. And now everything that I say that I'm believing in right now is just kind of believing, is leaving me. Uh, and now I start to question more and more things where I say to myself, you know, there's other things in my life that I'm questioning where I don't exactly see God in that. I think that's where a lot of people our age struggle is they don't see God in exactly everything. I don't even know if I see God in everything. I, I see God through things that might be a result of something that's terrible, but I don't see God in those terrible things. And this is something that me and Seamus talked about last time where we didn't have a definitive answer for why God allows terrible things to happen in the world. And that's a big question that turns a lot of people off from believing in a higher power. There, there's a lot, of, even if you don't believe in God, in the universe, why would you put your faith in the universe? Why would you try to manifest something out of the universe if the universe allows terrible things to happen? Why would you put your faith into something bigger than yourself if you can't answer these key questions? And for me, it's the community that keeps me coming back to it, where we all can share these ideas with each other and we can hear our own individual experiences and we can take pieces from everyone's individual experience and we can help create a more rational picture in our own head about what's going on. Because if we just try to do it by ourselves and do it all siloed off, 
and we're like that meme of Charlie from Always Sunny where he's trying to like put the dots together and like connect all the stories and you're trying to do it all by yourself. It's very difficult to do that as a one person show. We're never meant and we never will be meant to be individual creatures. We're always meant to be a community. And that community is what provides me with that strength. Yeah. And I think, I think that also just goes into a reason why I, you know, if anyone were to ask me why I have faith, why I believe in things is, is simply, simply put as to what you just said is that there's just too many things that I question and want to know about. And at the end of the day, we're all kind of just piecing together random knowledge and stories and facts to kind of answer what we're looking for. And having a source, having a faith to turn to for me is comforting and for you. And we, we believe that that's something comforting. I find it hard to kind of, I find it hard to, to understand I'm not criticizing. I just, it's just the way it's that I am is I find it hard to understand how you could really go through life with just, I mean, I guess some people are just very accepting and okay with the fact of just not having these answers. And my personality, I was built to not really be that way. I, I kind of need to have a little bit more of a foundation um, behind some of these things. And, you know, like I was saying before, just some guidance as to how to live my life. Something that I was just kind of thinking about too there is that I don't tend to look um, super forward when I think about my faith too, because we live lin- we live linear, like a linear light timeline here, like as humans. And candidly, to me, God is helping me in the moment. I, I can't change what's going to happen in five years, 10 years, two months, tomorrow, whatever it may be. But to me, God is a pathway for the moment that I'm in. And to speak with others and to have those conversations that you're talking about, Michael, like, you know, sitting down and, you know, talking about whatever it is in relation to work through stuff. I think something that I've also had to like really emphasize for myself is that I have questions about like the afterlife and all that kind of stuff. But candidly, I I, I don't think about it too much, not because it's like, oh, scary thought, like what's going to happen, but more just it's something that I can't control yet. It's out of control. I have to trust whether it be in God or just in, even if I didn't believe in a faith, I have to trust in just the world, you know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I'm only in control of so much, but I can, you know, my emotions and my thoughts and my feelings and everything that I'm doing is in this state. It's in this moment, it's in this consciousness. So to me, my, if my faith can't, you support that, then it's going to be difficult for it to be supportive at all. I guess I would say for me personally. So being able to have those conversations with the community and, you know, deal with those things. And as you're saying, Michael and Tom, like the, the we aspect of it, you know, there's so many different perspectives and thoughts and questions. That's where, that's where the stuff's going to come out. That's where it's going to change my thought in this moment so that it might change for the next moment in the following and then eventually hopefully becoming just better understanding even if you're not answering any of the big questions that we may never have an answer to in 60 years or whatever maybe down the road yeah there was um throughout college there were a couple moments actually where um whatever i i you know like all of us we face people who are you know kind of self-centered cocky whatever really just focus on themselves and not other people right um, and are very boastful, whatever the case may be. And one moment that I found or faith came in handy for me was um, that I found a, a Bible quote from Proverbs. Um, I can't necessarily recite it word for word, even though I've had a sticky note of it on my desk for like two years. It's just, it was, you know how, Bi- you know how Bibles go. They're, they're, they're worded weird sometimes. So like, I can't necessarily remember. But basically it was essentially saying to, you know, be humble, focus on who you are. And it was like, you know, the one who, um, who speaks highest above themselves is the one who lacks bread, essentially just kind of saying to stay grounded, you know, who you are, you know, what you're doing, and be 
content with that. You don't have to always one up someone. You don't always have to, you know, if someone's being, you know, cocky and rude and whatever, you don't have to get the last word in all the time. You can kind of just let them be the way they are. If you know that at the end of the day, what you're doing is right, then kind of let it be. And that's just one example where I found that faith kind of helped me in that situation um, as to where it just grounded me. And it kind of gave me, it wasn't really an answer. There was no answer I was looking for, but it guided me. And like you just said, of the things that we can control, because there's a lot that we can't control, when you find something like that that can control your mindset and your thoughts to which you can then control a future situation that you may potentially be in, I think yeah. that's what matters most. 100%. Could not agree more. Thank you once again to the boys. An absolute pleasure as always. And today's conversation was definitely not one that I thought I was going to have. But I'm glad that I did because I'm always looking to challenge myself as a host, as a friend, and as a thinker. If you enjoyed today's conversation and you want to see even more incredible conversations, please follow along and leave a rating wherever you may be listening to the show. It really helps me grow the show and grow it to its maximum potential. As always, it is such a pleasure to be able to produce this for you all, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to listen. Until next time.